Okay, so a very good afternoon, one and all. Welcome to Mr. Yen's Gini book, uh, Gini class, I would say, Gini class for P4 Mathematics. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover today. All right, so if you remember, in the last lesson, we did some word problems involving multiplication and or division with or without remainder, right? So we didn't touch on addition or subtraction in the word problems, but for today, our word problems will involve all the four operations, meaning addition, subtraction, multiplication, as well as division, okay? For those who are asking, what's four operations, okay? Plus, minus, multiply, divide, okay? So it can be in any of these combinations here in the word problems that you're going to see later. So what I want you to do is to read the question, know what each clue or what each statement allows us to find out. Then think of which of these operations, plus, minus, times, or divide, are you going to apply? Now, first of all, let's take a look at this recap question number one. Okay. Now, it says here that Mr. Tan traveled 136 kilometers in a day. Now, that's a very long distance, right? If you're driving a car, that's still a very long distance. Okay? 136 kilometers in one day. So the question here is, how far would he have traveled in 38 days? So which operation are you going to apply here? All right, so what you need to do here is multiply the distance that he traveled in a day by the number of days that he's going to travel for. Remember what I did for this multiplication by a two-digit number? I split this, right? Like how I do for number bonds, all right? So I can split this into 30 plus 8. So in other words, I can have 30 groups of 136 with another 8 more groups of 136. So you can work it out this way. 136 multiplied by 30 first. So you have 30 groups of 136. Then you have another 8 more groups of 136, like this. So you can work out these two multiplications separately, okay? All right, now for the multiplication of 30, now remember in a few lessons ago, you can take 136 times 3 first, then later on add a 0 to the back of the answer, right? because 30 is 3 times 10. When we multiply anything by 10, it's just adding one more 0 to the back. So for those who missed the lesson on multiplication a few weeks ago, right, to take 136 times 30 is the same as taking 136 times 3 first, then you add a 0 to the back of your answer. Okay, then you do the same for 136 times 8, after which you add both answers together. Okay, okay now let's start with 136 times 30. So we can start by taking 136 times 3, right? So see how I do it? So 6 times 3 is 18, bring up the 1. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. So put a 0 here and bring up the 1. Now then 1 times 3 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Now this is only for 136 times 3, but I'm doing 136 times 30. 30 is 3 times 10. So I need to multiply it by another 10. So it's just adding 1, 0 to the back of the answer. So it's 4080. Okay. Now then for the other one, 136 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48. Bring up the 4. 3 times 8 is 24. 24 plus 4 is 28. Bring up the 2. Then finally, 1 times 8 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. So we have 1,088. Now last but not least, we're going to add both answers together. So 4,080 plus 1,088. We will get this. 5,168, and the answer is number four, okay? But of course, there are some of you who probably learn it from your parents, learn it from your siblings, right? That you can actually do it just like that, right? Straight away, without having to split it into this two, right? 136 times 30 and 136 times 8. Okay, now let's move on to the next question, all right? Next question. Now you're going to tell me whether this is addition, subtraction, multiplication, or is this division, all right? Now for recap question number two, farmer Lee harvested, harvested means he collected, right, from the farm, right? Harvested 2,000 oranges. He wanted to pack them equally into eight baskets. The clue here is pack. What is he trying to do here when he's packing them equally? So how many oranges were there in each basket, right? Divide. 
All right, so what I need to do is take the total number of oranges and divide by the number of baskets where I'm supposed to pack these oranges equally into. Okay, so give it a try. This is a division of a four-digit number by a one-digit number. Okay. okay, so let's take a look at how we perform the division of 2,000 by 8. Now, again, we start off from the leftmost digit here, 2, uh, because 2 is smaller than 8. So we can't do the division. We have to first put a 0 in a thousandth place of your quotient. Right? Then multiply, subtract. Okay. Bring down the next digit, 20. Ah, so 20 divided by 8. What is 20 divided by 8? What's the closest multiple of 8 here? Right? Second multiple of 8 is 16. It's the closest to 20 already. Okay, so subtract, bring down the next digit, 40. Now, what's the what's 40 divided by 8? The fifth multiple, 8 times 5 is 40. Subtract, and then we bring down the last digit, which is 0. So 0 divided by 8, yep, just put a 0 here. Okay. So therefore, the answer to this question is 250, number three. Good job. Now let's take a look at the last recap question. Penelope has 1,376 bits. Okay, so that again is a lot of bits. Now she wants to place nine bits in a container, or should I say in each container? Okay, I shouldn't say in a, in each container. So what is the least number of containers, right? Least, huh? She needs in order to place all her 1,376 bits, okay? All, huh? All the bits, right? No more, no less than 1,376. So what should I do? When you're again trying to split this total amount into smaller groups, what are you supposed to do? Yes, very good. I'm supposed to divide. So I'll take 1,376 divided by 9. Okay, let's take a look at what's the problem here. Now let's first perform the division of 1,376 by 9. Now again, starting from the leftmost digit, 1. 1 divided by 9, mm, cannot. Let's put a 0 here. Multiply, subtract. Bring down the next digit. Now 13 divided by 9. So the closest multiple of 9, of course, is the first multiple of 9, right? 1 times 9 is 9. Subtract, bring down the next digit, 47. Oh, 47 divided by 9. So what's the closest multiple of 9 here? Right? 45 is the closest multiple of 9 here. So I know that 9 times 5 is 45. Subtract, and we bring down the last digit, 26. So once again, what's the closest multiple of to, uh, 9 here to 26? Right, so 9 times 2 is 18, and ooh, there is a remainder. Right, so but let's put down the answer first. We have 152, right, remainder. This is your remainder, 8. Now, 152 here stands for containers. Huh? But what about the 8? 8, does it also stand for the number of containers? Imagine if I didn't give you options, right? Some of you probably will take 152 plus 8 and say that, oh, the answer is 160. <laughs> no, huh? the 8 here stands for the remaining bits. Okay, so I already have 152 such containers with 9 bits, 9 bits, 9 bits, 9 bits, 9 bits in them. But I have 8 remaining bits there. Now, am I going to throw away those 8 remaining bits? Is that what Penelope wants to do? No, she wants to put all her 1,376 bits into containers. So even though she has 8 bits remaining, even though she has 8 bits remaining, right, she still needs one more container to place that 8 bits. Right? So therefore, I should take the 152 containers and I plus one more. The one more is to put the remaining 8 bits in. Okay, so therefore, the answer should be 153. Right, so I see why some of you actually put down the answer is number 352, right? Because you have to also consider, right, there are eight bits left. I'm not going to throw them away. Neither am I going to just put them on a table. Penelope wants to put them in containers, right? So therefore, you need one more container to place the eight bits. So altogether, 153 containers, okay? Now, let's take a look at first question. Now, in this example, sorry, in this question here, it says, Mr. Raja, right, gave... 32 stickers each 
to 434 pupils in a school. Okay, so that is the first clue. Let me highlight it first. Eh? This is our very first clue. Now, after giving 32 stickers each to 434 pupils, what, does, what did Mr. Raja have left? He had 24 stickers left. So we have two very important clues here. So when you're looking at the word problems, I want you to analyze and try and understand what each clue is trying to let us know or let us find out first. So from the first clue, 434 pupils in the school, each pupil received 32 stickers. What can we find out first? Which operation should we apply for this clue? We must multiply. So for this clue here, what we need to do is to perform a multiplication, right? Because we are told the value of each small group, right? Each pupil, 32. 32, 32, 32, 32, 32. So when we are trying to find out the big amount, how many stickers do all the students or all the pupils here receive? We should perform multiplication. So first step, 434 multiplied by 32. Now again, how to perform the multiplication of two-digit number? Remember just now in the recap question, what did we do here? We split. Okay, we split this into 30 and 2. So later on, you guys will try this out. You take 434, multiply by 30. Then also take 434, multiply by 2. You add both together. Okay. Now, after we have found out the total number of stickers that was given to all the pupils, what do I need to do next? Look at the next clue. Mr. Raja had some stickers left. And my aim is to find out how many stickers he had at first, at the start. So what should I do? This time round, we need to add, right? Put back the 24 stickers to the big hole, the, the big sum of stickers given to the pupil. Then we know the total, right? So once you have gotten the answer here, you take that answer plus 24, right? So this will give you the final answer. All right. Okay, so let's start with the multiplication of 434 by 30. So to solve this part, we can start by multiplying 434 by 3 first. Okay, so let's take a look at the workings here. 434 multiplied by 3. Okay, so 4 times 3 is 12. So I bring up the 1. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. So I'll bring up the 1. Now then lastly, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. Now, I have here 1,302, but because this is only for multiplying by 3, but in this working statement, I'm multiplying by 30. 30 is 3 times 10. 10, right? So I still need to multiply this answer by 10. So I add a 0 to the back of this answer here. So that will give me 13,000 m. 20. Okay, now for the next part, 434 times 2, so 4 times 2 is 8, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 again is 8, so that is 868. Now then, let's add both answers together, I will get 1,000, oh sorry, 13,888. Wow, nice number here, 888. Okay, now that will be the total number of stickers given to all the pupils, but is that the number of stickers he has at first? No, he still has stickers left after giving away those stickers to the pupils. So we need to add back the leftover stickers, right? So we take 13,888 plus the 24 stickers that he had left. So the final answer, right? Let's do the addition. Huh? 24, 8 plus 4 is 12, 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11. Then this is 931. Okay, so that is 13,912. Number four. Okay, now let's go to this question. Now, Kelvin had $235. Jack had 34 times as much money as Kelvin. Ooh, Jack is pretty rich here. Okay, more money than Kelvin. 34 times as much. Now, then Joanne had $2,194 less than Jack. Oh, so that's another clue. So altogether, we have several clues. We know that Jack had this amount compared to Kelvin. We know that Joanna had this amount less than Jack. Okay, so make sure, take note of these two clues here. 
what's the purpose of giving us these two clues? So let's start from Jack. Can you all tell me how do I find the amount of money that Jack has? Multiply. All right, so we're going to take 235 multiply by 34. Oh, so once again, we are multiplying by a two digit number. All right, so after we have gotten Jack's money, how then do I find Joanne's money? So the clue here is Joanne had 2,194 less than, right? Take note, less than Jack. So she has lesser money than whatever Jack has over here. So we are going to take Jack's money minus 2,194. Okay. Okay, time's up. Let me send you guys a sticker of encouragement. Now let's take a look at the first part. All right, so we are supposed to multiply 235 by 34. So let's start by taking 235 times 30. Okay, so here we can do the 235 times 3 first. So 5 times 3 is 15. Now let's bring up the 1. Now 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. So put a 0 here and bring up the 1 here. Now lastly, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. Now, this 705 is for 235 times 3. But here, we are doing 235 times 30, where 30 is not just times 3, but it's times 3 times 10. So I need to multiply this by 10. Very simple. Add a 0 to the back right, of this answer here. So this will give you 7050. Now, for the other one, 235 times 4, 5 times 4 is 20. Bring up the 2. 3 times 4 is 12, 12 plus 2 is 14, and then we have 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9. Okay, so this is 940. Okay, let's add them together. We have 7,990. So we now know how, many, how much money Jack has. So then we can work out Joanne's money. So we take $7,990 minus 2,194. Okay, so this one here, you can work it out on your own. I will not show you the workings for that. So the final answer would be 5,796, which is number one. Now let's take a look at question number three. Hmm, if you have been to the wet market, or we have been to the supermarket, right, you know that eggs are sold in crates, sold in packets, or sold in trays, right? the cardboard trays. So here you have 36 trays of eggs. All right? Each tray contains 120 eggs, all right? 256 eggs were sold to Mr. Lee. How many eggs were left? So let's again highlight all my clues. I have the number of trays. I have the number of eggs in each tray. And we know how many eggs were sold. And my final goal is to find out the number of x left. Okay, so let's take a look at the first two values given to us. Right, so we have the number of trays, we have the number of x on each tray. So what can I do with these two values given to us? Which operation sign should we apply here? Plus, minus, times, divide, which one? If you know the value of one small group and you want to know how many are there in all the big groups, that's when you multiply. Okay, so in this case here, we are going to take 120 multiplied by 36. Okay, which again, as mentioned just now, you can split this up. Huh? Okay, so you can split this into 120 times 30 and 120 times 6. Right, because you can think of it as you have 30 trays of 30 groups of 120x and then you have 6 more other trays of 120x. Okay, now then, oh, another clue. 256 x was sold, given away, right? So what should I do next? Which operation sign should I apply? Plus, minus, times, or divide? It's minus, right? So since it's given away, I'm going to remove it from my total amount so that I can know how many x were left, right? So here, after you've gotten this answer, you subtract away 256 to give you the final answer. All right, so now let's go through this question together. I think there are some students that didn't see option three and option four carefully. Huh? <laughs> All right, now let's start with the multiplication. So we have 120x in the 36 trays each. 
So we first take 120 times 3. So we can perform first 120 times 3. So 0 times 3 is 0, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 3 3. Then we add a 0 to the back of that answer. So this is actually 3,600. Okay, then we have 120 times 6. So 0 times 6 is 0, 2 times 6 is 12, bring up the 1. And finally, 1 times 6 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. So we have 720. So how many eggs are there in total? Add them together, we have 4,320. Right? But that's not a final answer. Huh? That's not a final answer because we need to take away the 256 eggs that were sold to Mr. Lee. So we should now perform the subtraction. Okay, so we take 4,320 minus 256. Yes, Ezra, pass route. Thank you. Right, so we have final answer, 4,064. And is it three or four? <laughs> Some of you press four. Oh dear. Answer is number three. Right, number four is 4046. Ah, ah, look carefully. Okay, so that's for question number three. Okay, now let's move on to question number four. Okay, now in question four, we have Fatima. Wow, again, all these characters here, they either have a lot of oranges, they have a lot of eggs, right? In this case, lots of canned drinks. Okay, so let's see what Fatima had. Fatima had 225 cartons of canned drinks. In each carton, right? Another clue here. In each carton, there were 12 canned drinks. Now, given that Fatima sold 157 cartons, how many canned drinks did she have left? Okay, so again, we have altogether three values. We have three values here. Let's highlight them first. I know the total number of cartons that Fatima had. I know how many cartons she sold. And we know how many canned drinks there are in each carton. And my aim is to find out the number of canned drinks left. So what's the most efficient way of solving this question? I know some of you will probably think, hmm, should I take the number of cartons in total, multiply by the number of canned drinks in each carton? Should I do that? Will that make my calculation easier? Because my aim is to find out how many canned drinks she had left, right? And I know that I was told the number of cartons sold, not the number of canned drinks sold, right? Can you see the, this part here? I was told the number of cartons sold, not the number of canned drinks sold, right? In this question three, I am told how many eggs were sold, right? So that is why I performed the subtraction last after I found out how many eggs there are in total. But for this one, I am not told the number of canned drinks sold. I am told the number of cartons sold. So I think the most efficient way I should do it for this question, right, is to first find out how many cartons of drinks Fatima had left. I should first find out the number of cartons that she had left, which means this one. I should subtract the number of cartons that she sold. So that I know how many cartons were left, right? Then after I know how many cartons were left, right? Then I multiply the number of canned drinks in those number of cartons. Yes, right? So take that number of cartons, multiply by 12 cans in each carton. This will give me the final answer. This will be easier. Right? But of course, for those who have already started working this way, huh, you'll take 225 times 12. Then later on, you'll take 157 times 12. Then later, you perform the subtraction. Subtract those two answers. That will incur three steps. Do you see that? That will incur three steps. But if you follow what I did here, I only need two steps. Okay, so for those who prefer this method, you can try this. Either method works, okay? You can choose method one. Okay, this is method one. Huh? This is method two. I leave it to you which method you prefer. Okay. Okay, now let's take a look at the first step. 
Okay, now let's take a look at method one, step number one. Okay, so you all understand because we are told the number of cartons that were sold. So it makes it easier if I find out first how many cartons were left after she sold. So I take the total number of cartons, 225, and we subtract 157 first. So this would give me 68, right? Fatima had 68 cartons, or you can think of it as boxes, huh? 68 boxes left. And in each of these box or carton, there were 12 canned drinks. So therefore, I will take 68 times 12. So for this, 68 times 12, if you split this right into 10 plus 2, this is just 68, sorry, 68 times 10 and 68 times 2. Ah, 68 times 10, very easy because I just need to add a zero to the back, okay? So 680. Now then 68 times 2, right? You just do the multiplication and that gives me 136. And finally, we add them together. This would give me 816. Okay, for those who are asking about method two, why I multiply 157 times 12. Now, because I want to know how many canned drinks were left. So the first step in method two is first finding out how many canned drinks in total. Okay? So this is the total canned drinks. Now, then what about 157 times 12? The 157 cartons that she sold away had 12 canned drinks in each carton. So this tells me the number of canned drinks sold. Can you see that? Then finally, we subtract, right? We take the total number of canned drinks, subtract away the number of canned drinks that were sold. So this would then give you the final answer, which is also 816. Okay, so regardless whether you work using method one or method two, both can allow you to find the answer. But now that you have seen both methods, you compare both methods, you realize that method one seems easier because method one, you only need to perform multiplication once. And this multiplication is a two digit by two digit. But method two, ooh, you are doing multiplication twice. And both multiplications involve a three-digit number multiplied by a two-digit number. So can you see method two seems more tedious and more challenging? And it's high chance you can make careless mistakes more easily as well in method two. So let's try question five. Same thing, I'll guide you guys to solving this, okay? Now let's take a look at question five. So Mr. Tan had a total of 2,490 apples and pears. Now, given that there were 346 more apples than pears, how many apples did he have? So let's take a look at the two clues over here. I have total number of apples and pears. I have 346 more apples than pears. Now, before you start doing thinking which operation sign I should start using, right? Plus, minus, times, or divide. Because I know some of you, when you see words like more than, straight away, ooh, I'll go and do plus, I'll do addition. Now, don't go into that first, because when you see words like more than, less than, and of course, you have the total amount, this is a comparison question whereby model drawing will play a very important part. Okay, model drawing plays a very important part for comparison questions using words like more than, less than. Okay, so for this, I'll show you how the model looks like. But at your end, you can also try to draw the model on your own as well right now. So let's start with one model for apples, one model for pears. Okay, now because I know that there are more apples than pears, right? There are more apples than pears. So when you're drawing a model, of course, the model that you draw for apples have to be longer than the model that you draw for pears. So let's start first doing a very simple sketch like this. Okay, More apples than pears. But how many more apples than pears are there? So this is our hint. So the difference you see here in the model, this is 346. Okay, now then next, 
this quantity here, 2490 is the total. And where do we label the total in our model? Over here, right? Put a bracket. This is 2490. Ah, so then how many apples did he have? This is what we do. So what is the first step that you recommend that we should all start with first? Do I divide 2490 by 2? No, right? Because these two models are not equal. So we cannot just simply take 2490 and then we divide by 2. We first need to remove away the extra part here in the model, this part that's jutting out from the model first. So the first step, we will take 2490 minus away 346. Okay, so let's get rid of this part first. Okay, so after, after I remove away this part from the model, so what do I see? I have these two equivalent blocks. So let's call this one unit. And this also is a one unit. So I have now two units. So these two units here will be your 2490 minus 346. Okay, so let me go through this. So all understand the model, right? So at your own free time, go and practice drawing models for comparison type of questions like this. Okay, for questions with more than, less than, with the total given, right? Draw models. Okay, so now two units here is equal to 2490 minus away 346. And many of you already found this. This is actually 2144. So now that we have found two units, how then do we find the value of one of those units? So we divide. Okay, so we take 2144 divided by two. Okay, so we'll perform your long division for this, which isn't that difficult, right? Because the numbers are pretty easy to divide by. So you should get 1072. But that's not the final answer. That's not the final answer because my apples here, if you look at a model, is one unit with another 346. Okay, so therefore we need to plus now. Take 1072 plus 346. So the final answer would be 1,418. But of course, if the question is asking for the number of pairs, what would the answer be? Right? If the question is asking for the number of pairs, that would just be 1,072. Right? Because the number of pairs is equal to one unit. Okay, but look carefully, since we're asking for apples, then of course, we must plus three, four, six. Okay, now let's take a look at this scenario over here. Right, can be a bit confusing, but I'll help you all. Okay, now in this challenge question, it says that Benson, right, he's trying to perform a multiplication of a four-digit number by a one-digit number. Okay, think of it this way, huh? a four-digit number multiplied by a one-digit number. Now, instead of a seven, he saw the last digit of the four-digit number as a one. Whoa, so careless. Right? So it's yeah, a four-digit number multiplied by a one-digit number. So instead of seeing this number here, this last digit number here as a seven, he saw it as a one. How can he do that, right? So in the end, he obtained an answer of what? 5,000. 124. Now, given that the four-digit number is multiplied by four, oh, so now we know what the one-digit number is. This one-digit number is a four. Can you find out the correct answer? Huh? What does that mean? Okay, don't worry. Step by step. Can you first find out for me what this four-digit number Benson mistaken it as first? Right? So in order to find out what this four-digit number here is, let's do backwards. Let's divide. So we are going to take 5,124 divided by 4. So that means the number that Benson mistaken it as, right? he should check his eyes, huh? he saw it as 1,281. But is that the actual four-digit number that he's supposed to multiply? The actual four-digit number should actually be 1,280. Seven. Remember, instead of seeing a seven, he saw it as a one. 
So that's why the actual number he should multiply by is 1,287. And what's the one digit number he must multiply by? Multiply by four. All right. So do you think you can find the answer now? One, two, eight, seven times four. Seven times four is 28. Bring up the two. Eight times four is 32. 32 plus two, 34. <laughs> I think the answer is closer and closer already. Two times four is eight. Eight plus three is 11. Finally, one times four, four, four plus one, ah, five. All right, so yep, the answer is 5,148. Okay, all right, so that's the last question I have for you guys today. All right, so that's all I have for you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>